Alrighty, well, let's add a note here. This is uh, section uh, 7.4, uh, exercise 30. And this is just to show some slicker ways to get this done um, in Desmos. Uh, so the problem is that we are told f of x is equal to um, x squared minus 4 uh, all squared. Okay, so we um, we have this curve here and for that curve uh, we have parts A, B, C, and D. We're going after the arc length and so I'm going to do this actually uh, D first. So in D they just want us to get the arc length uh, from 0 to 4 here and uh, so to do that we just need our integral so integral from 0 to 4 of uh, the square root of 1 plus f prime of x uh, squared and then that's uh, dx and we get an answer of 160 points something and um, sure why not uh, this goes up to 140 something up here uh, at f of the 4 and uh, um, you know, and and so to get from here up to there is definitely more than 144 because it's going on a slant, and so 160 sounds like it could be very reasonable. Uh, let's move me over here. Uh, okay, so there was part D. Um, part A, uh, we just want uh, the length from here to somewhere around here. Uh, it's a little too far. But, um, anyway, we want that, that length. Well, I have f of x defined and so forth, so um, I can just use these two points and, and do the distance formula. So I need um, the square root and I need the difference in the x's, so that's 4 and 0. Uh, squared and the and then the sum uh, added to that of the difference in the y so that would be f of 4 uh, uh, whoops jumping the gun a little bit minus oh f of 4 uh, minus uh, f of 0 um, squared and we get an answer of 128. Um, uh, I, you know, we could uh, we could see those points. You know, we could plot them and so forth. But notice the straight line going there. It looks like it. Yes, it would be a lot shorter than this curve. Okay, so that's part A is just to do that. Now part B. As I do the same sort of thing, but line it up at these uh, five points, 0 and f, 1 and f, 2 and f, 3 and f, and 4 and f. Well, so to get that, um, those values, I, I think the easiest thing to do is set up some uh, lists and uh, with those values. So I'm going to set up the x values from 0 to 3. These are going to be the right-hand endpoints of each of the line segments. So uh, I'm going to call this x1 and equal, and I'm just going to do a square bracket in 0, 1, 2, 3. And see here it says it's a four-element list. And then um, I'm going to do the same thing with the right-hand size and call it x2. Now I guess I could have called this like L and this R. Um, but uh, I kind of like the X's, so then 1, 2, 3, and 4. So those are the right-hand endpoints. 
and um, now what I want to do is the same sort of thing I did here with the F's but just to kind of show what's going on with these lists is suppose I plot um, x1 and f of x1 notice what happened was it gave me these four points where it took each of the values of x1 as the x1 value and then um, uh, evaluated f at each of those and so it gave me all but the last one and I suppose I could um, you know if I made them all the same color uh, I could do the same thing here so I could highlight this and do a control C for a copy uh, come down here and control V for a paste now they're different colors but I could go here and um, make them both green say done and now go in here and just edit that to be a 2 and a 2 and now it looks like I have you know all five points there so that's kind of kind of neat and then I think another thing I can do here is um, if I want to I can uh, maybe uh, lines yeah so I can I can make draw the straight lines in between them and um, do that and so you know I could I could pretty this thing up kind of showing you know this is what I'm doing um, with these points uh, is is making these line segments so um, you didn't you know nobody has to do that but this is just to show you how this is working uh, it it does each of these values of X um, when I evaluate it this way so that's a nice thing for lists so what can I then do with that is um, I can do the same sort of thing of the X1 and the X2 and F of X1 and X2 so uh, if I do a square root and I take uh, X2 minus X1 notice it says it's a four element list uh, because what it did was it took 1 minus 0, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, 4 minus 3 like that and then plus uh, f of x2 minus uh, f at x1 and squared and you see it's a four element list so it it computed the lengths of each of these four pieces now the question is um, you know what's that total and uh, or sum and actually I can just do that by saying total and putting parentheses around this thing and you see it added up those four lengths of the straight lines doing this and I got 160.15 for part C so pretty nice I, you know it, it really does quite well and as you look at this I mean these two these two first ones are very very close um, these two uh, I'm really surprised that um, the answer is that close uh, as I look at this but um, uh, I don't know yeah I am I am kind of surprised now that I really look at those pictures I'm not convinced that's correct um, hmm well, I'll have to uh, there are some things we could do to look at this um, so for instance uh, I, I could instead of saying total here I could assign this to something so this is a little troubleshooting um, you know when you when you get something that actually after you think about it a little bit you kind of wonder is that right so here I'm gonna I don't know call that S for segments 
and um, I should be able to see s of 1 is 7 so that's the length of the first one it says that's a length of 7 and s of 2 says that's a length of 9 and you know um, I can kind of blow this up to try to figure out does that make sense um, that's at 16 that's at 9 and so it it dropped uh, a total of 7 and uh, I mean yeah it dropped a total of 7 as I went over 1 but see that's the thing I only went over 1 so 7.07 .07 looks good uh, I agree with that and then um, as I look here to the next one right that was 1 and 9 that is 2 and 0 so it dropped 9 units and went over 1 so 9.05 looks good okay it's just this weird scale I guess because then if I um, look at S3 uh, the third length whoops um, 25 and again as you look at that that went from 0 up to 25 and and so it needed to go at least 25 anyway uh, but this is, is exaggerated here because see that's only one so on the scale that looks like a big big difference but it really isn't that big right because uh, the distance across here is you know this is from 2 to 3 so you know here's uh, what are these maybe 0.2 each way so the distance across here is only uh, 0 0.2 0 0.4 less than 0 0.6 so um, it's just deceiving so I believe it I, I can do the last one here s of uh, 4 and that's 119 and again if I check the y values I'm, I'm sure I'm happy with it so this looks good uh, and that gave us a, a nice way to kind of see how to um, look at each element of the list is just name it something and then just ask and so we can now do our total of s and that's the 160 so that was really you know that's a very good estimate of this thing uh, and then finally it wanted the midpoint rule now so for the for 10 midpoints okay so the midpoint rule for 10 midpoints I'm going from um, 0 to 4 here dividing that by 10 so I'm going by 0.4 each time and so 0 to 0.4 that first interval you know so here I could um, uh, make a, another list you know I could say x3 and let me just make the list of uh, the interval spots right so I would the endpoints of the interval so I'd start at 0 and then I would go to 0 0.4 and then I would keep going like that so I put a comma and then dot 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 and I'm gonna stop at 4 so comma 4 and it says it's an 11 element list now I can I can plot those points on the x-axis just by making y 0 and so notice if I say x 3 comma 0 there they all are and it looks like I did what I hope to do right these are going 0.4 so now to get the midpoints notice I need 0.2 and then 0.6 and then 1 and so forth so the way the midpoints work is I'm going to start halfway between these first two but then add 0.4 or my delta x each time so um, so I'm going to make a list I'll call it x4 equals and here I'll go 0 0.2 uh, comma and then 0 0.2 six comma dot 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 
comma, and my last one is going to be halfway in here, so 3.8. And there's a 10 element list, and I could plot those the same way I did up here. Um, so here's uh, x4, uh, comma, 0. And they're basically the same color, so let's change the color to maybe orange or something like that so we can see these and done and so you see these all did end up in the middle there so there are my midpoints okay so I could turn that off I don't need to see that but you know I might want to still look at the midpoints here um, now so the midpoint rule says I just need to get the function value at this midpoint um, times the interval width of 0.4 and add all those up. Now here's where we have to be careful. I don't want this function. Remember we're, the midpoint rule is for an integral. It's we're trying to approximate this integral. And so what we want to do is take that function and Find, find its value at the midpoint and, and see what we get there. So um, I'm going to copy that, control C. I'm going to come down here and call it a function just so we can see the, the function here. G of X is equal to, and then paste with a control V, and you know there is that function at each of these points and so that's the midpoint I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab the function value right here near point two, you know, at point two. So 3.322 and then this function value here at point six and so forth. Okay, so that's the function value I want. And so now I just need um, that value at um, my midpoint, so x4, and times delta x. Well, I didn't write delta x anywhere. It was 0 0.04, uh, or sorry, 0 0.4, or 4 over 10. So I'm just going to write 4 divided by 10. And there's a 10 element list. And um, those, uh, let's, here's a fun thing. Again, you don't have to do this, but just to try to convince you this is really, you know, we're trying to do the midpoint rule. I'm going to um, uh, try drawing some rectangles uh, around these midpoints. Let's see if I can do that. I hadn't thought about trying to do that, uh, but I, I should be able to get the height here. Um, so let's see what happens if I say I want, um, well, let's see, I want y uh, to be between 0 and this value. Okay, now I get a whole bunch of these because this thing is um, uh, doesn't have an X uh, requirement on it. But now I'm going to uh, put in an X requirement that the um, X has to, I'm going to take uh, X Four minus zero point two and um, less than or equal to x and less than or equal to x four plus zero point two and so you see um, what it did was it took the midpoint and um, it uh, uh, has the y value going, oh wow, well, 
So I said it had the y value going. Oh, look, I've got this 4 here. It's kind of weird. I don't know when that ended up there. Um, oh, the 4. Oh, silly me. Okay, that 4 there. See, um, I'm not so bright. Okay, so this was the times delta x, so let's get that out of there. Just so you can see uh, what I did here. And and see, so there's the function. And um, I'm making these rectangles. Okay, so there's the actual height. And I made the rectangles by going 0.2 on each side of my x4. Um, so these are the midpoints. And, and it builds that up like that. Okay, so it's going to add up the areas of all those rectangles if what I do then is take my um, total of G4, uh, G of X, X4 times my delta X, so 4 divided by 10. And I get a good number, 159.55, not actually as good as the four straight lines, um, but I can do that. So, you know, the to cut to the chase here on part C with the midpoint rule, you know, I, I added in this other stuff to try to prove to you that this is what I was doing, but all I really needed, I needed the midpoints, so those are there at... Um, x4, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and so forth. I needed my um, function of the arc length uh, integrand, you know, the square root of 1 plus f prime quantity squared. And I had to define f back here, right? So I needed three things. I needed to define f. I needed to define my midpoints. I needed to define my integrand uh, for arc length. Okay, so I needed that much. And then I simply needed to get the total of that in integrand uh, evaluated at the midpoints. That's what I'm doing there. And then times delta x. And notice that I could have put the delta x on the inside or the outside. So here it's on the inside. Uh, but it's the same number uh, multiplied in a sum, and so you could have just factored that out, and I could put the uh, 4 divided by 10 out here, and I still get the 159.5. So where you put your delta x, as long as delta x is always the same number, doesn't really matter. It could be on the inside of the sum or the outside of the sum. But there is all of uh, number 30.